On today's episode, Bugatti doubles down with a monster internal combustion engine. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. For gearheads worldwide, the allure of exotic sports cars is irresistible. Millions who will never own a Ferrari, Lamborghini or Porsche follow developments at those companies the way fans follow football teams with the same sort of reverence and awe of stick and ball sports fans. For enthusiasts with a sense of history, however, there is a brand that ranks a notch higher than any of the three exotics I've just mentioned, and that's Bugatti. Unlike the other exotics, Bugatti history goes back decades before World War II, and the Type 35 is regarded by many as the pinnacle of pre-war sports car engineering. Today's Bugattis are widely admired as ultra cars, a class of sports car one level above Ferrari, Lamborghini, or Porsche, primarily from astronomical prices and 200 plus mile per hour top speeds. Now, propelling any vehicle to 200 miles per hour requires prodigious horsepower, and Bugattis are no exception. Delivering astronomical power in a world where CO2 emissions are increasingly regulated might suggest battery electric drive, but Bugatti has announced what may be the last truly great internal combustion engine. The next generation will sport a V16 engine, which is expected to produce well over a thousand horsepower. Speaking at the recent Financial Times Future of the Car Summit in London, Bugatti Rimac CEO Matej Rimac announced that the coming replacement for Bugatti's W16 will be surprisingly naturally aspirated. Previous Bugatti designs used four turbochargers, which is consistent with traditional ultra-high performance design methodology. Turbos generally improve internal combustion engine specific output, decrease weight, and allow a more compact engine block compared to naturally aspirated designs, and the new V16 goes solidly against this trend. As reported on Motor1.com, the new V16 will be 16 inches longer than the previous engine, at well over 39 inches in overall length. While generally acceptable in front-engine, rear-drive sedans and touring cars, in a mid-engine application, that kind of length will require clever engineering of the transaxle to keep the wheelbase reasonable. A crankshaft of that length also introduces possible torsional resonances, and historically taking the final drive from the center of a long crankshaft addresses this problem, but the new Bugatti engine drives the gearbox conventionally from an end. According to German source Auto Motor und Sport, displacement will be 8.3 liters with a 9,000 RPM redline. A dual-clutch, 8-speed automated transmission will produce an engine gearbox assembly that is almost 79 inches in overall length. It will be integrated into a hybrid system with three electric motors, one powering the rear axle and two for the front wheels. The onboard battery will be a modest 25 kilowatt hours, allowing just under 40 miles of electric range. And the estimated combined output of both systems? The German source is quoting a figure of approximately 1,800 horsepower. Now, aerodynamic drag scales with the square of speed, but with a slippery body, it's possible that the new Bugatti may be the fastest production vehicle in history. The current record holder is another Bugatti, the 1600 horsepower Chiron Supersport 300 Plus, with a reported top speed in excess of 300 miles per hour. How fast is that? The all time lap record at Indianapolis is held by Ari Leyendijk at just under 240 miles an hour in an Indy car. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.